Namaste. This presentation will provide you guidelines for handling biomedical waste and disinfection and cleaning of a COVID-19 designated area. Firstly, before waste disposal, cleaning and disinfection in the COVID-19 designated areas, all personnel should be dressed in the complete PPE. That is, there should be inner disposable gloves, outer heavy duty gloves, a water resistant gown, goggles, N95 mask, a hood and a long rubber boot. The donning and doffing should be as per the protocol, which are described in videos on covid.aims.edu. Only in the designated areas. And in the doffing area, there should be three red bins. They can be labeled either above or on the bins so that each bin contains specific items. Bin number one is meant for goggles and face shields. These can be reused and therefore it should be immersed in 0.5% sodium hypochlorite solution. Sodium hypochlorite is what is known commonly as bleach. This should always be freshly prepared and the immersion in the solution should be for 10 minutes, after which they can be taken out, dried and wiped with 70% alcohol swabs. The second red bin is meant for the N95 masks and the waterproof coveralls. These should be stored in double bags which are red in colour and handed over twice daily to the authorised staff from sanitation and housekeeping services. The third red bin is meant for the disposable items in the PPE like the shoe covers and the inner gloves. These two are to be handed over to the authorised waste collecting staff of Messrs Biotech Waste Solutions Private Limited. For the biomedical waste disposal, the rules remain the same. The colour coding remains the same, which means that what is supposed to be disposed of in a yellow bag continues to be disposed of in the yellow bag and that which is supposed to be disposed of in the red bag continues to be disposed of in the red bag. The only difference is that all the biomedical waste should be double bagged. That is, you are going to be using two bags so that there is adequate strength and if there is any leakage, that is also prevented by the second bag. All the dedicated collection bins should be labelled as COVID-19 and should be stored separately in a temporary storage room. All the bags, bins and trolleys should also be labelled as COVID-19 and there should be a meticulous maintenance of record, not only of the generation but also of the segregation, collection and the final disposal of the waste. This is an example to show you how to label the double bagged waste. First and foremost, you can see that it is labeled as COVID-19 waste. Then it tells you the contents, that is shoe cover and gloves. And lastly, it also tells you the date and time of when this waste was collected. Now, when cleaning the area, as I already told you, the dedicated staff should be wearing the PPE, that is personal protective equipment. They should disinfect the disposal area and the bins and trolleys with 1% hypochlorite solution or bleach that is freshly prepared. This should be done under the supervision of a sanitary inspector, the facility manager or an operator so that there is no breach in the protocol of cleaning to prevent the spread of any infections. In a COVID-19 designated area where and while a patient is admitted, in order to clean and disinfect that room, before starting the disinfection, it is important that the contaminated area is sealed off and anyone entering that area should wear the appropriate PPE and all the buckets that are going to be used for the cleaning 
should be rinsed with hot water. There are two disinfectants that are going to be used. One is freshly prepared 1% sodium hypochlorite or bleach, which should be left for contact for at least 10 minutes with all the surfaces that are cleaned with freshly prepared bleach. The second is 70% alcohol, which could be based out of isopropyl alcohol or ethyl alcohol. This is for cleaning delicate instruments like thermometers, stethoscopes, BP cups, etc. The disinfectants should be applied to the surface using a damp cloth. Please do not use sprays because that would have an uneven coverage and can also produce aerosols. Secondly, use steady sweeping motions so that there is no splashing which will also prevent the generation of aerosols. There are other items in the room that will also require cleaning like curtains, fabrics, quilts and bed sheets. These are to be collected for washing and in the laundry they would run a hot water laundry cycle with a detergent or bleach at 70 degrees centigrade for at least 25 minutes. The floor and all accessible surfaces like furnitures and fittings and windows should be cleaned with 1% hypochlorite solution. The high touch surfaces like door knobs and door panels can be cleaned with 1% hypochlorite or if 70% alcohol is available, that may also be used. Please discard all the cloth and absorbent cleaning items like the mop heads and the wiping cloths like other biohazard material in the bags and fasten the bags with cable ties. After the cleaning is over, ensure that all the buckets are also disinfected by soaking them in 1% bleach. How often should the cleaning be done? Now, there are two kinds of surfaces, high touch surfaces and low touch surfaces. High touch surfaces include doorknobs, telephones, call bells, bed rails, stair rails, light switches and wall areas around the toilet. There are two areas, clinical areas and non-clinical areas. Clinical areas are also two in nature where there is a patient admitted or a suspected patient admitted and a second clinical area where there are no suspected cases admitted. Non-clinical areas would include corridors as well as stairwells. So in a clinical area with a suspected case for high touch surfaces, the frequency of cleaning should be one to two hourly. Where there are no suspected cases, two to three hourly. And in non-clinical areas, at least three to four hourly. For low touch surfaces like walls and mirrors, mopping should be done. And this is done two to three hourly in an area with a confirmed or suspected COVID case. It should be three to four hourly where there are no confirmed cases and at least once per shift in non-clinical areas. All precautions related to infection control apply even during the cleanup process. The staff should wash their hands with soap and water immediately after removing the PPE and when cleaning and disinfection work is completed. All PPE should be discarded in the docking area as in a double bag biohazard bag which is red in color. All the staff should also be aware of the symptoms of COVID-19 disease and should report to their occupational health service like cough, fever, malaise, etc. If a patient dies or is discharged or is shifted to another facility, the room needs to be cleaned as above, but this will also include fogging with a hydrogen peroxide based disinfectant, which is made as a 20% solution in distilled water. Further details are available at the AIMS Infection Control Manual. 
approximately one liter of the 20% solution is used for 1000 cubic feet size of the room, where the cubic feet can be measured by multiplying the length of the room by its breadth and the height. After fogging, the personnel should leave at least 30 minutes of contact time. And after the completion of the fogging, please keep the room closed for at least 45 minutes so that the mist can settle down. Again, wipe all the surfaces with a clean, moist duster. So this is just to show you how high touch surfaces need to be cleaned with a 1% freshly prepared bleach solution. Whereas in an ICU or a ward, surfaces like bed rails and instruments can be cleaned with either 70% alcohol or 1% bleach solution. The floors are going to be cleaned with a 1% bleach solution, which is always freshly prepared. For any further details, please refer to the AIMS Infection Control Manual and other details like the videos for doffing and donning and hand hygiene are also available at covid.aims.edu. Thank you.